Hey everybody, Daryl Bear. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. So I've had a couple people ping me, either through the area or through YouTube, and ask about the environment that I was using for the 2015 um, demos. So this is the uh, this is it. If you guys haven't seen it, so I use this for the new feature videos that I worked on, as well as the demo that I gave at NAB. And the main part of this. Um, environment is created with some geometry that was derived using reality capture. So the guys at Xrez actually did this work for us and they were kind enough to share the assets with us and this is really just a mashup of a bunch of different reality captured little sand um, formations that happen and I just sort of shoved all of those guys together so I'll kind of uh, walk you through a couple of the other things that I did in the scene. So basically, um, if you look at the scale of these guys, they're actually really pretty small. If I jump over here to this video, this is just a recording and you can get a sense of the scale of these with the tripod on here. So the X-Res guys use a combination of laser-based scanning and photographic techniques using um, Recap. So if you don't know about Recap, if you go to the Autodesk website or just Google Autodesk Recap, it's a really cool piece of technology that we have for doing reality capture. So basically getting um, geometry and texture maps from objects that exist in the real world. And we also have Catch 123D which is a free application that you can put on your iPhone or your iPad that allows you to take a bunch of different photographs, send those pictures up to the web, and have it spit back an FBX model to you. So it's actually pretty cool too. Obviously the um, the recap one is a little higher end, has a little has a little more functionality in it than the free one, but they're both really useful tools. So I, I definitely recommend you know going on to the Autodesk website and checking those guys out. So that's what the XRES guys use to take, you know, take this data, um, either the laser-based data or the photographic-based data, kind of mash those guys together and ultimately generate, you know, some of these some of these really cool models that we're using. So that data I got from those guys brought into Maya. It actually came across, this is the original data before, um, before I worked on it a little bit. So essentially the data comes in, it's got all the color information baked into it. So inside of Maya, the way I set my, my demo scenes up, I'm always using Viewport 2.0. And in this example, because I had live action or, or reality objects to try to match to, I just went with a really simple simple lighting model. So I've got one strong directional light that represents the sun. I've got an ambient light in my scene and a couple point lights. So there's four lights in the scene. I took the, the um, texture maps that were on the reality captured objects that originally had a surface shader on them. So basically no lighting contribution from Maya being added to that and I switched them over to just standard Lambert. So that's how I'm getting a little bit of the lighting in the diffuse model. So I just tried to balance out the diffuse lighting a little bit with this sort of CG lighting to give me the ability to get kind of shadows in there. And then I just turned out all the bells and whistles in Viewport 2.0. So things like screen-based ambient occlusion I have turned on. I'm using a sky dome, which I have selected now with a high dynamic range image on it. When you create a sky dome and you go inside it, if you turn on screen-based ambient occlusion, it's going to get dark. So all you have to do to fix that is just reverse the surface normals on that. So that's one trick, and I think I talked about that in another blog post previously, but if you know, once you get inside that sky dome and you have screen-based ambient occlusion on, throw that reverse normal switch on to fix that. So you know, I just sort of tried to fix the texture maps up a little bit. Like right here, I'm basically transitioning off with a little bit of paint work from the, um, the dark side to the light side, because again, I'm just mashing these guys up. So the color balance between what was on the back side you know, the dark side of an object versus the front side or the bright side of an object didn't really work out so great. So I just sort of tried to balance out that color map information a little bit. And the other thing that's adding to the overall look of this, there's a couple of other things that sort of add to the overall look. I've got, um, I'm working in a linear color space. So if you go to your options in your viewport 2.0, you'll see that I've got the gamma on this guy cranked almost to two. I think I dropped it down a little bit to kind of pop it a little bit, but it's essentially working in a linear color space. So I'm taking all these texture maps into Photoshop and de them so that they, they don't look totally washed out. Um, or you could use a gamma node inside of Maya, but you need to handle the fact that if you're working, if your viewport's going to be um, in a linear color space, you need to make sure that you get your texture maps into that linear color space also. So that's one one tip. And the other thing that's kind of neat about this scene is I've got these clouds in the, in the environment. So the clouds, as I kind of move around here, you can see there's like this parallax thing that sort of happens with the environment. And the way that's happening is that these clouds are actually really just simple pieces of geometry. If we kind of zoom out here, you'll see that they're just simple pieces of geometry floating in space. And these just have texture maps on them that I got from um, TurboSquid. So if we go ahead and actually we'll do it like this, we'll graph it this way. 
graph that guy. You can see that they're just uh, some texture maps, and I'm using this blend colors to adjust um, the sort of dark and light aspect of those guys. So I've got two different colors that are that are used to remap the overall color balance of those textures to make them match the environment that they're in. But again, it's really just simple simple geometry with a little bit of transparency on the edges. Um, from these texture maps from these clouds. The other thing that goes into this scene that makes it look kind of cool, you know, we turn the depth of field on, it looks even better, um, is the fact that I've got this kind of volumetric fog effect happening. So if we turn off the fog, and this is just a simple Maya fluid that I'm using for that, so it's a giant fluid that encompasses the whole scene with no animation on it. So it's just using the texture engine from the fluids um, inside of Maya 2015 that we can now represent accurately to give me this sort of nice volumetric look to that guy. So that that pretty much sums it up. It's really not an overly complicated scene. Again, most of the work comes from the from the reality capture that the X-Res guys did for us. And a couple other things that I do, like I always make sure that like on my clouds, I you can see that if I get behind them, they don't show up. And that's just because I turned off double-sided. So, you know, simple little things like that. Make sure you turn off cast shadows on, on things like your sky probe on the clouds. That, you know, sometimes you may or may not want the shadows. But because I have this directional light in here on this, on this piece of geometry, the main cloud, I also have cast shadows and receive shadows turned off so that they're not fully encompassing the scene in shadows. But, you know, all in all, it's really not overly complicated. Just working in a linear color space. Um, geometry that's based on reality that's got cool texture map information in it. I'm trying to match that lighting model as best as I can with my CG lights, and it's a really simple lighting model, just just a directional with ambient, essentially, and a couple little point lights for pop. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And um, you know, if you wanna if you wanna do this type of work in viewport, those those tips and tricks will help you get going. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all next week.